LabVIEW is virtually an industry standard for graphical system design. Developed by national instruments, it's used in areas from academic demonstrations to university research projects and then on to industry test, measurement, control and many other applications. LabVIEW has been around for many years and we decided to look into its beginnings, how it all started. The foundations for LabVIEW were set in place when National Instruments was founded in 1976. To find out more about this, we talked to one of the co-founders, Dr. James Trouchard. So we had been working at the university on a new way of making measurements using computers and analog to digital converters. And we recognized that computers were going to play an important role in testing measurement. So with that vision, we started a company, uh, developed our first products, recognizing that uh, IEEE 488 GPIB would give a new level of productivity to connecting instruments to computers, and so we started there. Initially, the three founders, Dr. Trouchard, Jeff Kodosky, and Bill Nolan, were working out of Dr. Trouchard's garage. However, after a while, new ideas started to develop. We spoke to Jeff Kodosky, who is often called the father of one of these new ideas. Um, we needed to expand the business beyond GPIB control, and um, we thought about tackling the problem of how do you create software for uh, instrument systems. And uh, we thought about a lot of ideas for extending languages and so on, but when the Macintosh computer was introduced, that's what really set off the light bulb. LabVIEW development had started in 1985, and it took 17 months of hard work to develop LabVIEW version 1. Like a lot of development programs, there were many ups and downs. So um, we were located in a small windowless office down near campus, and we were on a mission to uh, change the world. Uh, the uh, feeling was really uh, intense excitement uh, on one day, and the next day, intense despair. Would we ever get this to work or not? Uh, but we succeeded, and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> like any new product, when LabVIEW was launched, the response was a little different to that which the team had expected. So uh, LabVIEW was first launched in October of 1986, and um, the customers we were targeting um, actually ignored us. And instead we got a whole slew of Macintosh enthusiasts who saw in LabVIEW the ability to do something they couldn't otherwise do. To meet all the different customer requirements, a variety of new capabilities were launched over the years. LabVIEW 1.0 was launched in 1986, and its first patent was granted in 1990. This was a major achievement in the development of LabVIEW, but further developments were being made to improve its performance. Uh, in order to satisfy the customers that were coming to us, we needed to have a lot more performance. And so we set about making a compiler for Dataflow. And that took us about another three years to do. But that was uh, a major accomplishment. In the following years, other variants and additional programs giving further capabilities were introduced. LabVIEW 1 was followed by version 2 in January 1990, and this had a compiler. LabVIEW 2.5 was introduced, enabling it to run on Windows. And then version 3 was a multi-platform version for Mac, PC and Unix. In 1999, LabVIEW 5.1 was launched to provide a real-time enabled version. And then in 2003, LabVIEW 7 was FPGA enabled. Since then, many more facilities have been added and a new version called LabVIEW Communications came out in 2015. This was aimed at the rapidly growing wireless and RF industry. And of course, all these new developments and capabilities enabled many organisations to use LabVIEW in a variety of different ways. All kinds of things from uh, production tests to uh, verification of new product designs to uh, 5G research, um, underwater um, uh, measurements and exploration, uh, space um, uh, launches, everything you can imagine, LabVIEW is used there. So what memories do people have of these early versions of LabVIEW? I remember joining NI in 99 
and multiprocessors were all the rage, and LabVIEW 5.1 captured that. And being able to see researchers doing brainwave research with LabVIEW was just so inspiring. People respond to software in different ways, and we asked what the response to LabVIEW had been. I suppose the one thing that's uh, most surprising to me is how people react to LabVIEW and how they really engage with it on an emotional level. And I've had that same experience myself, and uh, it, it's really exciting. The successful standards and applications all have a roadmap into the future. What will happen with LabVIEW in the future? So I think there's still opportunity for uh, advancing the state-of-the-art in graphical system design, uh, particularly in being able to see multiple levels of abstraction in a design. So uh, there's lots of uh, uh, avenues for further development of LabVIEW. The exact format of future versions of LabVIEW remains to be seen, but like any successful standard or product, it is being updated to keep pace with the needs of tomorrow's engineers.